Hello everyone and welcome to Gearock Farms. In today's video we are going to be addressing the Oliver. Those of you who have been following the channel for some time now know that last winter we uh, discovered a, a big issue with the Oliver. It was getting coolant in the oil. We have some engine problems. We had it sit there for most of the summer. Just haven't had a whole lot of time to work on it. Now when it comes to farming we're in between corn silage season and picking corn, picking dry cob corn. So we got a little extra time here now on the farm, haying is done. We're gonna start to dig into the Oliver, at least uh, get a better idea of where our coolant leak is coming from, where coolant is getting into the, the engine oil. So then we can order some parts and uh, get the ball rolling on this before winter. So starting off here, probably gonna pull this guy ahead. So we're working in the light a bit more. So I'll get the ammo out of the way, get the skid steer over here and, and tug the 1650 up to the front of the shop so we can start working on it. And before we get started, if you guys are tuning into the channel for the first time, subscribe if you wanna stay up to date with uh, our uploads. If you enjoy it, make sure to hit the like button. It helps us out a lot. Okay, we got everything shuffled around in the shed. We got the Oliver closer to the tools now. And I also left uh, the Super MTA up here up front so that uh, we can address some small issues with that, like a flat tire. And uh, there's some small things to work on with that, but I'm gonna start in on the Oliver. So the plan of attack is to run this Oliver again. We got some waste oil from another tractor that we just changed oil on. Might be a bad idea. Should be okay to run this in there for a while. I just want to get it hot again. See if we can't uh, expose what's leaking and get a better idea what piston's causing issues or what area of the, the motor the leak may be in. Because we don't want to go through all the effort of trying to pull off the head and everything until we got a better idea of where our actual problem is. This will be a learning experience for myself and my dad. Neither of us have crazy experience when it comes to rebuilding engines. We're pretty primitive that way. So the hope is from tackling this project that I might learn a little something and get a better idea of how to rebuild an engine. And I plan to bring you guys along with every step of the way. You guys can watch me struggle and critique me and leave some good helpful tips in the comments. Thank you to everyone on the all our videos from a while back giving us an idea of what uh, challenges we could be facing, where uh, the engine might be having problems, where the coolant might be leak leaking into the oil. So thank you to every single one of you who did that. Before I dump the oil in, uh, a guy recommended to pull all the spark plugs and try to see in there if uh, there's coolant in one of them or if now that's been sitting for a while, if one's really uh, corroded white, he said. So I'm gonna try that. See if I can pull uh, some of these spark plugs out without breaking them off. And uh, then we might try to put our oil pan back on and put some oil back in this thing and run it. Hey 
first spark plug looks okay looks normal just some soot we'll uh, keep going down the line here and I'll update you guys if I find anything suspicious I pulled all the spark plugs and nothing super obvious on uh, any of them which uh, I don't know if that means that it wouldn't be coming from the top end then or maybe there just isn't enough dumping into one cylinder to cause that or uh, maybe that was just a waste of time I don't know you guys let me know that's what I've heard from somebody is that uh, it's possible that if you pull a spark plug you might be able to see where a coolant was sitting in one of the cylinders and I kind of flashed a, a light down through the spark plug hole trying to get a somewhat of a look in there see if I could see coolant sitting on the piston in there no crazy signs there so we'll uh, hook the battery charger up to the batteries because I imagine they're they're probably dead sitting for a while charge them back up while we throw the oil pan back on throw some oil in it start it up Okay, do you have the distributor together? Oh, I, I think I got it backwards here. So I got the oil in the engine here. I went a smidge over full. We'll see what it does once we start it here. We've had the battery charger on for a while. So shortly here, we'll start it up and see what uh, happens. Get her good and hot and see if we can uh, spot what cylinder the coolant's coming out of. I took this off because I had trouble with the MTA and I thought maybe it was the coil. So I switched it, but it wasn't the coil. It's already a parts tractor. <laughs> you rob parts off of one. And then I, now I had to look at the MTA to see how it was supposed to be hooked back up. While you're uh, tightening that down, did uh, that M, did that starter stay together that I welded? Yeah. Uh, still starting? I only started it twice. Oh, okay. It's still working. It'll maybe the third time. Yeah, it'll break again. <laughs> And then uh, your grinder mixer, you want to let people know how that went? So the grinder mixer, so I got a bearing, a seal, and that flat washer, they took me a couple hours. I took my time putting that back together so I wouldn't ruin things, but, cause it was like a week in there. You know, then you have to remember how you, you took it apart, but yeah, so they sent me a seal, but I couldn't figure out where that seal goes. And then I got to thinking maybe that some of them didn't have that. They couldn't use the computer. They actually had to go back into a book. No. And uh, they did tell me that that seal probably wasn't necessary. But the seal was like two bucks. The washer was two bucks, and the bearing was two hundred. Yeah, uh, isn't that nuts? <laughs> and I know some guys are saying we probably should replace the other side, which maybe you're right. To get to the other side, we have to take apart completely different stuff. Anyway, we wouldn't have to take apart anything we already have a part for this side so I think we just grease it a little bit better maybe we get a lot more life out of it yeah and if it goes bad well we got options with my brother's mixer and we'll get her fixed we got to get our money's worth out of the bearing <laughs> yeah if they were a little easier to get at I think we'd probably just do it you know? also that went good it seems to work good but one day we should turn the hammers around I think there's four sides 
and we already got three sides used, and we could probably replace the screen that we're using now. I think we got a half inch hole in that screen. We'll see a difference there too. And there's a little mechanical update on the mixer, and uh, shortly here we'll be starting this. Sounded like it run really nice and smooth. Ran really good, which is super appealing, even after sitting without oil in it forever. Let's see if we already have signs of coolant in the oil after just a short run like that. Well, we didn't run it very long the last time when it got all that junk in there. Nothing crazy obvious like last, but we didn't have it running very long either.
Okay, dumping the oil out. It didn't look super uh, obvious that it was milky or anything, so we're gonna try to get her even hotter. We're gonna let it run for even longer. So we're gonna dump some oil back in and try again. Before uh, I start the Oliver up again, you want to talk about your unique story with the M? Oh, the fan. Yeah. He's fixing the small leak, and then he's also going to fix the fan on the Super MT here. See, so when you said what happened with the M, well, there's a lot of things happened with these tractors over 30 years. This fell off. So blowing feet up the silo, between the tractor and the silo, there's a stock tank in there, and I had a few heifers there, and they just get real nosy, but... She must have come in there, drink or whatever, but when she turned around, she had her butt against the shroud here, and that, while well, I'm blowing feet up the silo, that bent in so that you can see it bent this, and I thought the darn motor blew up or something. I mean, it made one heck of a racket. And then this piece was just laying down in there. Amazingly enough, didn't ruin the radiator or nothing. Uh, that's what I was about to say. You didn't uh, throw through any of the sheet metal or or because of kind of a or... puff of stuff come out of it. But I think it was just all the dust buildup after it hit. So I had to shut everything down. Of course, this thing is all hot as all heck. So got this and looking it over, I kind of pulled that piece back out a little bit and just finished blowing the load up. <laughs> <laughs> How many often can you do that with a new tractor? Yeah, you're down to what, <laughs> three fins? And then this? we blew up a couple loads after that too, just I never got it fixed, but I got that that part sim out in the cat pasture. I gotta go get the fan off of that. I mean, this is minor stuff, it's time. And I've been blowing feet up that silo here for 30 some years like this, same setup. Yeah. I've had cattle before coming in there and snows around with it, you know. But, uh, what are the odds of that? Yeah, and I'm like, well, there's something new. That's what we get for having uh, tame cattle. They're not scared of nothing. There's a little tip bit on the M. All right. You guys remember how much oil we got in there? A bit over full. And we'll run it again here.
bubbles and stuff on the dipstick. I don't know if that's a sign of something like that. Okay, we'll let that uh, settle out for now. In the meantime, I'll go up by the parts M and help Dad out. He might be almost done, but I'll let that sit for a while. Maybe it'll be a bit more apparent once it's been sitting in that oil. Maybe what we end up doing if we don't see anything here today, we'll uh, bolt that oil pan up all the way around. Maybe throw some gasket maker on it and try to use it for a week. And see what we're seeing then after using it real hard if, if there isn't an obvious it's leaking coolant right now or running it in the shop like that I wish it was a lot more cut and dry because this winter it looks super super obvious that we had a problem you know I think I could take this whole tractor apart with two vice grips and a 9 16 and a half inch wrench I got this tractor back in the early 90s well, it was a widowed lady and it was a corn picker you can see the bracket there yet mounted to this tractor in the National Corn Picker. The block, we got a crack in it, so they must have had some radiator issue and they just put water in, forgot about it, so that ruined it. I guess I got it for parts. So I've been scarfing stuff off of here for 30 years. And the radiator don't look too bad, but this is going to be kind of interesting getting this. As you got the shaft that goes through the radiator for the steering, there's two bolts that come up underneath that hold the radiator, and I don't know. Don't look bad. I hate to just wreck, wreck it, it to get at the fan in case I need it someday. I don't know how them come apart. I never had one of these ever off. But I thought I would take this off before I take the other one apart. I was wondering if I couldn't get this shroud somehow back to get in there to get that off of there. Not gonna cost us anything, that's for sure. I knew I should have bought one for myself for Christmas. I knew I, I should have bought, bought a cordless, yourself, so I got cordless grinder. Yeah. Yeah, and then just leave it here. Mm -hmm. Well, the grease gun worked out that way. Yeah, except I'm out of grease now. What the heck? This shaft is nothing. There's just a bit of nothing there. You almost got to take this shroud off and slip the radiator out with that piece in there. That's how this works. We got a belt here, there, get that bolt. One on the bottom, there's for sure two on this side. And here and here. Yeah. Might be just as well. You can dry it, I guess. Yeah, so after a meeting between Dad and I, we decided that we're gonna dump the oil that's out of there, take the pan off, gasket maker it, put some of that nicer used oil in there, and then we're gonna run it for a while and, and keep watching it. And just we just use it for whatever. And see what see what happens. Cause checking it here again, it's not super obvious like it was this winter when we parked it. Yeah, so you ain't gonna find no leak now. So maybe whatever, whatever, if there is a crack like in a sleeve or something, maybe it's just didn't get hot enough or maybe that cold to hot really works something. No, when it gets cold again, we'll know. Okay. I got a feeling we'll know sooner than later if there's something. But we ran it probably a total of 40 minutes, two times here, you know, 20, you know, 15 to 20 each time yeah, and nothing. So that's a little discouraging, but we'll uh And we're not gonna kill that motor with that used oil. No. As long as the oil looks good, you can't hurt the rest. You can't lose it. That's our plan. Yep. Now that we got the oil draining, I'm going to start taking the hardware off the oil pan and I'll uh, update you guys once we have uh, it off and are putting the gasket maker on. Then. 
put a piece of uh, like towel in there. Just then, when you put the nut in there like that, you can get it started without it dropping way down into the socket. There's probably other ideas too that people use. It's, I don't have these girly fingers to do this with, so I have to do it like this. Not like laying under a tractor when it's dripping on you. See, it's kind of tight, tight fitting. And up underneath in there is gonna be the tricky part. That doesn't work with that socket? I'm putting all the nuts on first. Oh, that's a lot easier by hand than trying to do that with that. Putting something together, we might be tearing that back apart again someday. So I've been uh, working on getting that oil pan back on and it's kind of a bear getting to everything, but we got it tightened up. I haven't noticed any major leaks yet. I think our gasket maker is working. I just ran it. I'm gonna let it sit now and I'll check the level again, get it right at the full mark. So then we got a nice baseline so we can keep checking it as we're using it here for the next couple days and uh, get a better idea of what's going on and how fast this is taking on coolant. Right now I'm going to clean up uh, our mess here. Spilt uh, quite a bit of oil over there. That was a interesting endeavor. We get everything uh, cleaned up here and we'll uh, top off our oil, park it over along the wall all the way and uh, go from there. Little bit of a shop video today. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to leave plenty of comments down below. Give us your opinion on what direction we should go with this tractor and what you think of that uh, mishap with the M. That's a once in a lifetime type deal there, that's for sure. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for commenting. Hit that like button if you enjoyed it. And uh, as always, we'll see you next time.